I put myself on display, my inner thoughts, the way I think through a problem, and the struggles I go through to find a way over, around, or through them. Along with this intimidating method of developing my design skills, and along with my ability to create compelling content for not only the day-to-day -day casual viewer, but also for the seasoned professional or dedicated hobbyist. I think there's something that I would enjoy if I happen to stumble across them in the vast wasteland of YouTube content. I've put in considerable effort to get to this point, and I've found that developing my skill set in video, editing, and planning, and even writing the dialogue for these series, the abilities I've expanded in CAD and CAM, and even with traditional Luthery hand tools, has been one of the most rewarding endeavors I've ever engaged in. If you enjoy this stuff, please let me know and share, like, and subscribe. You may not understand how much this helps me grow the subscriber base and produce better instruments, skills, and content. Why do I do this? Why do I do it this way? And why do I put this much of myself, my passion, in every nook, every corner of the process? Why delve so deeply into each circle, order the steps, and press to validate each turn of the crank methodically? The steps could order themselves quite handily if the goal were to produce just one product. You might think that the process would evolve into something that comes easily and is reproducible, Sure, it's a craft, so the product doesn't need to meet high manufacturing specifications or develop into an extremely high precision end product. If I'm going to engage, then I need to be able to work toward that capability, at the very least. I find comfort in the endless march towards a moving target far off in the distance, also moving at a seemingly exponential rate. In this modern world, there's a constant fear of the speed of change of the capabilities of technologies that we don't understand. And that's where the key is. If you don't understand something, find a piece, break it off, and begin trying to cut it down until you catch, at the very least, a basic understanding. Maybe you're not going to be able to understand it in its entirety, but the confidence that comes with partial understanding, while dangerous, can be infectious. It can provide the piece of success necessary to build your confidence to the point you can slide down rather than climb up. And rather than rolling a boulder up a hill for eternity, you can start for a short period coasting into the subsequent iterations with a high level of self-worth and a significant amount of arrogance. A season that can be easily overdone but is essential in small doses to get the formula right and alleviate the overworked laborious nature of the tasks at hand. I put all this on display here for the masses to critique, and critique they do. Still, with each iteration, their critiques fade further away from the rest of the process and sometimes even augment to praise the effort that is in some way distasteful. In the beginning, the critique was subtle, coming from a lack of understanding that the mechanization in my work could be more straightforward than the manual methods known. As I break down these ideas, develop my process, and show the journey, the understanding begins to break through these barriers and build confidence in the unknown. The conflict between automation and the traditional approach to this work has been at the core of the content of this channel for some time. And it's an exciting way to look at the problems we attempt to solve with tools. Ultimately, it comes down to just that, a person and a tool. That and one other crucial element, creativity. People have always taken tools and used them to create, at times out of necessity. But what ties us all together, in the end, is that we all need to use these tools to develop creative ideas. We interject this creativity into every aspect of the work. Yes, there's an engineering side, and when you use CAD and CAM, folks quickly think that invention is lacking. I can assure you, it's not the case. It takes creative engineers to solve problems. Creativity is, in a way, the core of engineering. 
Yes, there are simple ways to solve problems, but the best of us seem to be able to use their understanding of the tools and materials available to create a method that strikes us as elegant, creative, and simple all at once. And this is without a doubt driven from creativity. There are times when the work is hard, times that I consider whether it's worth the effort. There are difficult times when everything seems to be under fire. Along with them, good times, times when everything moves along with ease. These crests and valleys are essential. Without them, the mind will not be in the correct position to develop creatively. Artists need to be able to create so-so art. It can't all be great. In a way, the not so great stuff is just as crucial as the magnificence of unique creation. It's not all going to be great, but I hope you enjoy it either way. And I hope my successes and failures encourage you to go out and take a risk. Take a chance at an idea. Test what works and what doesn't. And develop, create, and above all, use a tool to make something. Thanks for watching.